In this episode of our van conversion series, we are installing a Max Van Deluxe in the roof of our camper van. This is one of the more exciting projects of the van conversion. The Mercedes-Benz Sprinter L4 H3 has a glass fiber roof and not a metal one. There are a lot of videos on YouTube showing how to install a fan in a metal roof, not so much in a high top glass fiber roof. So we went into this project with mixed feelings and a well thought out plan. The first thing to do is to clean the roof. Our van is parked under a few trees on our property and it hasn't been cleaned in years. This was a tedious job, but rewarding. We found out that our roof was actually green. In our design, we have two solar panels on the roof. The fan should be placed close to the middle of the roof, taking into account the position of the ribs of the glass fiber roof. We measured the exact location of the fan from the inside of the van. We had to cut away two strips of the sound adding material to be able to cut the hole in the roof. We cut it with a Stanley knife and pulled off the aluminium cover. As it was pretty hot with the sun shining on the roof, the bitumen of the sound editing was soft, so we had to scrape it off with a putty knife. On the inside of the four corners of the 40 by 40 cm square, we drilled 10 mm holes from the inside. So large enough to put the blade of the jigsaw through. And we taped the garbage bag on the inside of the van, so not to get glass fiber dust all over the inside of the van. On top of the roof we put painter's tape, so not to damage the roof while cutting the hole. With a pencil we drew lines along the outside of the holes we just drilled. After double checking every measurement twice, we decided it was time to actually cut the dreaded hole in our roof. The cutting itself was the least amount of work and effort. The jigsaw went through the fiberglass roof like a knife through butter. The hardest part was keeping it straight. We used face masks as protection because glass fiber dust is not that healthy. After removing the garbage bag, we would see right through our roof. A surreal sight. The first thing to do is a test fitting. The hole we cut was pretty much on the mark. After some wiggling around, the roof receiving flange fit like a glove. Cutting a hole in the roof of your van is definitely a point of no return, so this was a big relief. As we expected, the glass fiber roof was a little bit flexible and wobbly, especially in this hot weather. It needs to be strengthened before we can put the actual fan in. We decided to first put a layer of 12mm plywood in. We cut a rectangle the size that fit exactly between the fiberglass ribs of the roof. 
From the top we marked the exact size of the hole in the roof on the plywood. Then we cut the 40 by 40 cm hole with a jigsaw, resulting in two U-shaped pieces of plywood that fit precisely between the ribs of the roof and is exactly wide enough to put extra wooden battens on the side. We used universal assembly adhesive slash sealant and a lot of glue clamps to make sure everything was tightly in place. We also want a large area around the fan for extra strength convenience to secure our roof siding on and a steady base to install the interior garnish trim ring on. For this we used a 9mm sheet of plywood that we cut as wide as two of the ribs of the roof. In the middle we cut the same 40 by 40 cm square hole where the interior garnish trim ring needs to go. We will install this sheet of plywood later in the build but we need to do a test fitting first. And good thing we did. On the ribs are these buttons I guess you call them. I used the router to cut out gaps on each side so the plywood can be put in place against the whole length of the ribs. Before we can install the fan we need to do one more thing. We have to glue in place the wooden battens on both sides of the hole in our roof, in the length of the van. This further strengthens the glass fiber roof itself. And we have a steady base to put in the screws with which the fan will be secured to the roof from the top. These also have to be held firmly in place by the glue clamps to let the adhesive cure. Two hours later. With the inside of the roof strengthened, we now focus on the top of the roof. First up is cleaning the area around the fan using the greaser to remove all grease and dirt. With the roof receiving flange in place, we marked all the holes we need to pre-drill. After drilling the holes, we clean the area around the fan again. First we put two continuous layers of boot tool caulk between the roof and flange as a first step to waterproof the fan. To secure the flange to the roof we apply two continuous lines of Sikaflex 521 around the flange. After putting the flange in place we also put some Sikaflex in the screw holes. Then before fastening the flange onto the roof we apply the third layer of Sikaflex under and around the edges of the flange. So in total this means water has to pass these four barriers before it can get into the van. This should be absolutely waterproof. We tightened the screws bit by bit so we could double check the Sikaflex seal around the edges and add some extra Sikaflex there where needed. Then, after cautiously securing all the screws, we first applied Sikaflex to all the exposed screw heads. Second, we clean up the excess Sikaflex around the edges of the flange. Also, we made sure the Sikaflex had no holes or uncovered areas. Then it was time to actually put the Max Fan Deluxe in its place. To place the fan the lid has to be in the open position and the exhaust has to face to the back of the fan. You also have to make sure that the wires of the fan are not stuck between the flange and the fan. Then you have to align the four metal mounting clips on the flange with the mounting holes in the fan itself. This took us a while. It was really hard to get the holes lined up properly on all four holes to get the screws in. We spent at least 15 minutes of shoving, wiggling, pushing and strong language before we got it lined up. We even had to put some of the screws in from an angle to get it to slide into place eventually while the screw went in. It was quite a struggle, but in the end we got it all lined up properly. Thank you. 
the next day. Before cutting a hole in the roof and putting the fan in, we already bench tested the fan to make sure it was working properly. The black and white wires coming out of the Max Fan Deluxe have to be attached to the red and black wires of our electrical system in the van. Since our electrical build was not yet finished, we did another bench test after the fan was installed to make sure everything was still working, and it did. Getting the wires out of the way is essential to fit in the interior garnish ring on the inside of the van. We did lots of test fittings to ensure the wires were not in the way. We didn't want to cut the black and white factory wires of the van to size, so we installed a small grey leftover tube to store the excess wire in. On the two buttons of the side of the fan, we put two layers of 3mm MDF board to make these the same height as the surrounding ribs on the roof. We secured a sheet of plywood on the ribs of the roof and the battens along the fan. The hardest part was getting the foil face bubble wrap in place in between the main roof insulation and the plywood sheet. So with this whole construction around the fan in place, we took on other projects in the van. Many weeks later, we finally started installing the roof siding. We installed half, so it was easier to install and test the ceiling spots. And we had some trouble installing the ceiling as well, but that's for another video. A few weeks later, when all the roof siding was installed, we placed the interior garnish trim ring. This was pretty much the easiest part of the installation as we didn't even have to trim the edges of the trim ring. The distance between the roof and the fan was about 6 cm and the trim ring easily fitted without modification. It only took drilling the four holes in the roof siding through the factory made holes in the side trim and four screws to secure it. All in all installing the fan wasn't as hard as we expected. Rigorous planning and measuring is required but as soon as you are prepared and have a plan, you can do the installation of the fan itself in about 3-4 to four hours. Including waiting time for the glue or caulk. In our experience you will be installing the fan early in the camper van conversion, so probably you'll do the finishing touches of the project later on in the build like we did. Hopefully this video gives you some insight in how you can install your own fan. So thanks for watching, please subscribe to our channel and we will see you on the next one.